Hello world, how's it going? Welcome back to another This Old Tank. I'm your host as always, L.R. Bretz. And today, we are in the garage section. And the tank we're going to be covering today is this one on the end here, which is a little different. And that's why I wanted to do it. So let's check it out. Alright, so here it is. It's a little 10 gallon. And this is in my braiding rack. That I usually braid CPDs. Right now it's housing rainbow fish fry, I believe. They look like rainbow fish fry to me. They've been growing slow. I was hoping they were going to be barbs. But anyways, enough about them guys. I usually use it to raise up fish. And it's great for braiding fish too. And a good reason why is all these rocks. So your egg scatterers. A lot of people like to use the marble method. Which this is a lot like the marble method. So the eggs fall in through all the cracks. And I have it at multiple sizes. So there's, as you can see, bigger cracks than others. So eggs can fall in there. And then you remove your fish and you can have fry. So that's great for like tetras and barbs and rainbow fish, killifish, danios, mountain minnows, any of those fish that love to scatter their eggs. As far as plants, I have a Nubius barter eye. And this plant's great since it's a rhizome plant. It can just attach itself. Now there is some algae in there, but babies and fish do not mind algae at all. And it's not overtaking the plants. The key to algae is to just make sure it doesn't overtake your plants. Now, buches would be a good choice. Java ferns would also be a good choice for a tank like this. And this is just river rock that I got from Home Depot. 20 pound bag for like, I think less than five bucks, like three bucks or something like that. And it's got a airline in it. It used to have a sponge filter, but the sponge filter doesn't really do a whole lot because a lot of your bacteria and mulm and all the good stuff lays down in the bottom which the plants will root into as well so it's creating more or less dirt underneath these rocks over time but i do have that still in there because it has a weight on it which keeps the airline down in my bubble deflector working properly there's also some water lettuce in here i'm not a big fan on floaters like this i actually prefer some stem plants or pearl weed to float better than this type of plant. But it hasn't really taken over and it's a nice touch right now. The only reason why I don't like these floaters that much is because they can really start growing rapidly and just take over the whole tank, which makes it real hard to feed fish, makes it hard to catch fish out of it. Which brings me to another point. The reason why I keep Anubius and Java Fern or say a Butian here is the fact that I can move these easier. And I do want to end up tying them to driftwood. That way I can pull them out even easier to catch these fish. And as far as this thermometer on here, I actually got this off of eBay. It only comes in Celsius. They're pretty cheap, but you also get what you pay for. They're okay. You stick them on there. They're kind of neat. They last maybe a year or so. This one's actually, I'm surprised this one's still working to be honest. Now it's kind of hard to see, but if you see these little brown things sticking up out of the rocks there, those are black worms. I just added those the other day, which these are also really beneficial to the tank and the bottom of the substrate because they'll eat all that other stuff like the organics that need broken down and turn, help turn it into dirt as well. And it's also great for roots of plants because they help maintain roots of plants. There you can see that one's sticking out really good. But that's all it is, is some river rock. You see the mulm here, how it's built up over time. Turn into dirt. A little bit of Daphne in here. Quite a bit of Daphne over there. Which all these fry will make a good snack out of later. But yeah, pretty simple setup. Very versatile as far as how you can use it. Especially for egg scatterers and stuff like that. This is a soft water tank, so it's under 100 TDS. I'm not sure what the TDS is, which means it's probably got more of a neutral to lower pH, but probably not too low because there's not a lot of acidity in here. 
Now if I added leaves and stuff like that, that could make it more acidic. And what helped me get the smaller rock was usually at the bottom of the bag of these river rock, they have like a good clump of that smaller rock. Or you can get pea gravel, so you can just get different sizes of rocks, mix them in, and you can get more of a natural rock substrate. And this would be good if you wanted to put moss in it as well, pearl weed. Just the only thing that would be hard to grow in here are some stem plants. Because they don't have anywhere to really root. Alright, so there you have it. That's this week's This Old Tank. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Also, like, share. If you haven't done it already, subscribe, notification bell, my Patreon. If you enjoy this content, it'll help me keep going. And one day, maybe I'll get some good equipment. And like always, hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. Until next time, everybody. Peace.